It's been a little over 24 hours since I got my hands on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Initially, when I went to pick it up at the Apple Store, I had a lot of time to kill. So I went to check out some of the colors in person at the Apple Store, and under Apple's artificial lighting, this blue titanium did not look good at all. So I was really starting to regret my purchase. Thankfully, outside the Apple Store, this color under direct sunlight looks fantastic. The blue titanium iPhone 15 Pro is a beautiful colorway. Under certain lighting conditions, it reminds me of the Pacific Blue iPhone 12 Pro, and and sometimes it looks like a space black. Overall, I feel like this is a very nice color. And if you did go with this color and you weren't too sure, I'm here to confirm you made the right choice. My friend John and I went to pick up our phones together. He got his in the white titanium and the white is also a very nice looking color. You honestly can't go wrong this year with any of the iPhone 15 Pro colors, except maybe the space black. I feel like the space black by far is the most boring color in my opinion. Of course, a big change this year to the iPhone 15 Pro lineup is instead of stainless steel, Apple opted to go with a titanium finish. And as a result, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is noticeably lighter. In fact, it's 8% lighter this year when compared to the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And I think this makes a significant difference for everyday usage. Believe it or not, this year you can use a phone as big as the iPhone 15 Pro Max quite comfortably. The lighter weight of the phone certainly helps in that. But we also have slightly more pronounced curvature this year around the edges, which sits very nicely in the palm of your hands. This makes the iPhone 15 Pro Max easier to hold and rather comfortable. Comfortable. The titanium finish also provides a lot more grip than previous years, and everyone that was concerned about the fingerprint smudges along the frame can relax. Because in my testing, there are far less fingerprints this year thanks to the titanium finish of the phone. Also, Apple didn't mention this, but the speakers are a lot better this year. Probably the best speakers that are currently available on a smartphone. You guys are absolutely gonna love the sound quality coming out of the Pro Max. Also, in my opinion, the haptics are slightly better. The feedback you get from your phone is now a little bit tighter, it feels a little bit more well refined, and and also a tad bit stronger. But in the settings, if you are on iOS 17, you can make the haptics feel even better. Go into accessibilities and then haptics and make it run on faster. This honestly feels like the return of 3D touch. Make sure you go and try the setting out on your iPhone and let me know what you guys think. So far, everything about the 15 Pro Max sounds great, right? Well, not quite. I have some serious concerns about the 15 Pro Max, mainly in the durability, overheating, and maybe the battery department. So buckle up because this video is about to be one hell of a roller coaster. I've been feeling so small. Watch the clock ticking off the wall. How's it going everyone? My name is RJ and this is the iPhone 15 Pro Max in the blue titanium colorway. It's hard to believe that an iPhone now comes with a USB-C charging port. And I can confirm that the USB-C charging port actually works and does in fact charge your iPhone. So Apple was not playing any kind of a joke on us. This thing actually seriously works. <laughs> All jokes aside, I just want to let you guys know that I have a ton of Apple content coming this week, this month, and till the end of the year. So make sure you guys do subscribe to the channel. And if you could do me a huge favor, please do drop a like on this video, it certainly does help the channel. The bezels on this phone are also noticeably thinner, giving us a screen to body ratio of 89.75%. This is the most display we've ever had on an iPhone, and I think the display looks absolutely stunning in person. I wasn't really sure what to make of the action button, but man, it's proven to be quite useful thus far. I have it set to a timer, so whenever I'm in the gym and I'm resting in between sets, I can just hit the action button, set my timer to 2 minutes, and rest away. It's really useful stuff, but I feel like a double tap to open some sort of other app should come via a software update. I think that would make this even more useful. We'll talk about the cameras on this phone first and then make our way to things about this phone that have me seriously concerned. The cameras on the 15 Pro Max totally blew me away. I did not expect this much of an improvement in one year from Apple. Take a look at all of these images. There's less noise when you zoom in. The details are fantastic with a good balance of contrast and saturation. All of these images look true to life and vibrant. The biggest issue with every iPhone quite honestly was poor HDR. In the past, every iPhone did a terrible job with the blue skies and whatnot. This year, the HDR is totally fixed. The exposure is perfect, blue skies look natural and real, and overall taking pictures of scenery is amazing on this phone. Also, the new 5X telephoto specifically found on the 15 Pro Max is insane. Take a look at this picture. This was shot from a good distance using the 5X telephoto in portrait mode. The separation between John and the background is unreal. It's almost as if he's going to pop out of the screen. The depth of field has certainly improved this year with the Pro Max's camera. And 
Another really surprising thing is these pictures are all being shot in 24 megapixel. Other phones like say the S23 Ultra shoots a shot using the 200 megapixel lens, but then bins down that image to 12 megapixels. The iPhone shoots images in 48 megapixels, then bins the shot down to 24 megapixels, producing a higher detailed image with virtually no shutter lag. That's honestly quite impressive. Look at this comparison between the S23 Ultra and the iPhone 15 Pro Max. There's virtually no shutter lag when compared to the S23 Ultra. This is going to be so useful for taking pictures of your kids running around or even your dog that catches the zoomies every now and then. I'll go more in depth into the cameras in my full review so make sure you guys do subscribe and you do have that bell notification icon turned on. Now, here's where the iPhone 15 Pro Max gets interesting. This titanium frame seems great, right? It's lighter and supposedly stronger than aluminum. But the thing is, with titanium, it's much harder to dye the phone with color. It's probably a reason why Apple did away with the gold 15 Pro Max. And I find that titanium scratches rather easily. In just under 24 hours, I don't know how this already happened, but I already have a scratch on the bottom of my iPhone. I'm actually very sad about this. So yeah, I definitely recommend slapping a case as soon as you get this phone out of the box. I definitely learned my lesson and this case I'm using is made by a company called Andar. This is a leather case with MagSafe and microfiber lining, solid camera protection, it feels great in the hands and the buttons are nice and clicky. Use the discount code RJ for 15% off the Andar Aspen case. There's a link for you guys in the description below if you are interested. If you guys don't wanna get this case, by all means get whatever case you want, but I do recommend getting a case. So when I'm just casually using this phone for things like scrolling, texting, using the web, it's just fine. But when I decided to shoot a video in log format and then edit that video straight from the iPhone's video editor, the phone did start to overheat. And this was not just any sort of regular overheating. The iPhone 15 Pro Max got insanely hot to a point where I just couldn't hold the phone anymore. That's how hot it was. This has never happened to me before on any other phone I've ever tested in the past. Now, I believe this is due to two factors. First off, titanium captures heat 12 times more than aluminum, meaning titanium can get rather hot rather quickly. Next up is the A17 Pro chipset. This chipset found inside the iPhone is insanely powerful. In benchmark scores, it can easily keep up with the M2 MacBook Pro. That is some absolutely insane GPU power. But I feel like Apple made a mistake. They focused too much on the GPU and the raw power of the chipset rather than focusing on efficiency. The more efficient a phone is, the more it can handle tasks in the background without overheating. Or it could be that the thermal cooling in this phone isn't the greatest. Now, of course, you can make the argument that I'm doing a CPU intensive task, therefore it's going to overheat. Sure, that makes a lot of sense. But the thing is, this is a pro iPhone aimed at a pro audience. And Apple is marketing ProRes Log as an iPhone 15 Pro feature. So in my opinion, the overheating is extremely concerning. Hopefully this does get sorted out via a software update, but that still remains to be seen. Then there's the durability concerns. The iPhone 15 Pro Max failed Jerry Riggs durability test. For the first time ever, the back of an iPhone failed the bend test. You can see clearly that the glass does break when he bends the phone. Apple says the back glass of the iPhone is now much more repairable. But if it breaks this easily, I'd rather stick with what Apple is using on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Then we make our way over to the battery, which I can't say much about. It's honestly too early. But I do question how the lack of efficiency from the A17 Pro will ultimately impact the battery life. If the iPhone 15 Pro Max continues to overheat like this on a regular basis to a point where you can't even hold the phone anymore in your hands, then the battery health and the battery longevity will inevitably suffer. If you guys thought the battery health issues on your iPhone 14 Pro were bad, I have a terrible feeling that if this isn't addressed on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, it's about to be a whole lot worse. And lastly, I just want to put you guys onto these new USB-C earpods by Apple. It's by far the best $25 investment you'll spend at the Apple store. Remember the old earpods that we can't use anymore because Apple killed the headphone jack? Well, with the addition of USB-C, they're sort of back. These are USB-C earpods and they sound fantastic. There have been a countless amount of times where I drive to the gym and I realize I left my AirPods at home or I just forgot to charge them. With these USB-C AirPods, I don't have to worry about battery life. I'm just going to be keeping these in the dash of my car as an emergency set. And for $25 Canadian, I think these sound fantastic. If you guys made it to the end of this video, drop a dolphin emoji down in the comments below. I want to know exactly who my true supporters are. And of course, I appreciate each and every single one of you that watch my videos through and through. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And of course, don't forget to flex with your tech.